I will, as we continue, as we continue with this message to the children of Abraham, Yishak, and Yaakov, the true children of Israel, both the spiritual Israel and the, and the racial Israel, the once lost but now found black sheep of the family. It's important for us not to overlook what's going on at the UN right now. You understand? Or the UN at all, because the UN is like to say the Gentiles. Remember when the prophetic word says that the Almighty will bring the Gentiles together. You understand? He will bring them all together. And we see the work of His Majesty in that fulfillment of Yahweh bringing the Gentiles together. Even though the UN might have done some things in the past that might have been better, and the whole debate is out there vis a vis the UN, the UN gives us an opportunity to see the word of the Almighty concerning the Gentiles be fulfilled. And we're touching now on three particular points, looking at three particular points concerning what some regard as the rapture of Yeshua's, Yehoshua's, our black Lord and Savior's bride, speaking of the true church at the time of Yom Teruah, or the Feast of Trumpets. Now, as we put up here, let's just review this right here because it's important to keep into context. Yom Teruah, Teruah is trumpets or the Feast of Trumpets, which announces the fall festival season or the fall festivals of Yahweh, the Moedim of Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu. Now, it's important for us to understand that the, the connection with this is what we know in the world. You'll probably hear them talk about uh, happy Rosh Hashanah or Rosh Hashanah is coming or whatnot. That will be the evening of September 28th, the 29th, September 28th going into the 29th. But this, in truth, is not a Rosh Hashanah as the Jews who say they are Jews, who call themselves Jews say, but according to the scripture, if you study it, it's actually Yom Teruah, which is the feast or the festival of trumpets, which actually the trumpet announces judgment, because 10 days later is what is known as Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur or Ha Kippurim, you understand, the day of atonement. Now, those who are not in tune with atonement, and through that atonement, ones have that access to having their sins in the Old Testament sense covered, you understand, in the New Testament sense, having those things expunged, in other words, from the record. Of course, with the probational grace. Grace is a period. Grace is a dispensation. And we need to understand it as that. So, now that's what's important. That's the reason for this season. You understand? So we, as like a watchman, have to announce this. We see this on the horizon, even the comment, and we're not saying the comment will or must do, or the Lord has said that it will do this and that, but here's what we're saying, that it's one of the major signs of the end of the seclorum or the end of the Gentile world system or the domination by the Gentiles. Interestingly enough, as we mentioned already, the 22nd, the 22nd of September, I think is also some sort of alignment, too, based on some of the data and documentation information that we were able to, to, to glean through, so to speak. Um, and this day, the stock market, they're talking about dangerous economic time. They're talking about a crash going back, like, to World War II. You understand? They're talking about this is like doomsday, and they're using a lot of language in the news and the media like that. But interestingly enough, they've been talking about that satellite that's coming down, but they're not talking about this comet that's flying around out there. You understand? Even though information is out there, but it's not the so-called main um, Babylon stream, the main crocodile now, denial stream of mass media is, is not revealing this at all. So therefore, watchmen, and there are other watchmen and others out there who have put out much more even in some details in some ways, but this is a half of the story that hasn't been told until now. So here's the three points that we're looking at, right? The first one, as we mentioned already in the, in the last uh, video, was the creation of a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital, which is Daniel 9 and 27. There's a host of media and, and, and other, like New York Times, New LA, excuse me, LA 
Times, not New York Times, LA Times article, Haaret article, and some other information out there that we would point ones to if they want to get any more details about that. Um, but there's a Torah violation. See, there's a Torah violation, one, in not calling Yom Teruah Yom Teruah. You see, because the Jews, or the Jews who call themselves Jews, um, the Polish and the Germans and the, and the so-called Zionists, um, they will tell you about Rosh Hashanah. They will tell you about Yom Kippur. You understand? Sometimes they tell you about Sukkot. You understand? They tell you about some of the other Passover, of course. They'll tell you about that. Um, but they don't tell you about Yom Teruah. Now, in Revelation, trumpets is a very important thing. In order to understand what does it mean in Revelation, this idea of trumpets, one has to understand the context, you know what I'm saying, of the Old Testament. This is one of the reasons why over the last um, 51 to 52, going into 52 weeks, this Shabbat coming up, we've been touching on that base and that foundation because no other foundation that can be laid other than that of our black Lord and Savior. So in the Torah readings that we're in now, the Torah portions that we're in now, for example, 50, 51, and 52, this all covers the Beta Israel or the sixth, what's known as the sixth, the sixth covenant. There are eight covenants. One can call it, there are seven, and the eighth is the new, and that wraps up the other seven as one. However, if you look at each of them individually, there are eight covenants, and at number six is the Palestinian covenant. So this is the time that we're in, um, Torah speaking. If we're speaking in terms of the Torah, and we go to Deuteronomy, say, 2021, 20, um, to Deuteronomy um, 29 or Deuteronomy, say Deuteronomy 30 or so, we're going to find, especially in the Torah portion number 51. Now they say that 51, which is Nitzabim, always precedes Yom Teruah, always precedes so-called Rosh Hashanah. This is very interesting, that this one always precedes. Now we have 10 days. Now the 10-day period are called the days of awe. So now this year, according to the lunar rotation of things, that is the evening of September 28th to 29th. We've been seeing um, certain prophetical signs in the heavens, especially recently, that, that almost coincide and reflects what's in the scriptures, that it, it, these are ver some very interesting days. And we would do a disservice if we did not share this with you and those who are willing. Now, we've touched on before that they have hailed those in Brussels, the European, the Gentile powers in Brussels, they have hailed the PA authority to being above the threshold of a functioning state. And so they have given the Palestinian authority what would be considered a birth certificate for the Palestinian state. Now, Obama seems to have backpedaled somewhat in order to get the Jewish, the European Jewish, um, white Jewish vote and everything, and told them why you're here. You can't get nothing from here. I mean, that speech that he gave, wow. Especially those highlights right there, wow. But you need to also check out Ahmed Anidajad's speech as well, because he mentions the plight of our people as the Beit Israel. You understand the once lost but now found Beit Israel or the black Jews, the black sheep of the family, the Ethiopian Hebrews. He, he mentioned our plight, and we need to recognize that the slave trade fulfills Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 68, the curses for disobedience that the whole world would be able to recognize. And when you look at the so-called other Jews' claim and our claims as black Jews, you can, it, it's, it's, it's clear, it's clear scripture. We're not saying that others don't have a right to their converted um, their, their conversion, you understand, but they have participated in a perversion of the word, thus a Torah violation, and therefore a coming judgment. Now, we have these signs in the heavens. Now, Israel is going to make a peace deal with the Antichrist or through the Antichrist, according to prophecy, for seven years of which Isaiah says this, that your covenant with death will be annulled. The peace deal is broken. Notice this. The peace deal is broken by the Christos Tekawami, 
you understand, or the Tara, the Tara Christos, the Antichrist, three and one half years later. Now, here's what's curious. Some say, well, Obama's going to do this now, and then we look for three and a half years later. I say, wait, how do we know that he didn't already do this previously and may not break it now after the election? You know, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Because it's very likely, you know what I'm saying, that the, the powers that be, they like the job that he is, he is doing. I mean, with all this economic downturn, if there was a Bush or somebody else there, I don't think that they will be able to keep the people in this frozen psychological state. But a lot of us are very, you know, black folks and other folks and liberals are very upset about what Obama is doing in certain ways or he's not doing enough. But because he's the, quote, first African-American president, of so they stay like the deer in the headlight and they don't even want to say anything. So kudos to Tavis Smiley, to Cornel West and some of the other um, blacks and intellectuals, intelligentsia out there that have been at least touching on the issue and reminding you know, since seeking to remind the powers that be about the suffering of the most adversely affected, the base of the pyramid, you understand, the skulls and bones, the valley of dry bones that's at the base of the pyramid, and that's the lost sheep of the house of Israel, that's the so-called black folks in the Americas and the Caribbean, the lost sheep, right? Now, the end of the world, or the seclorum, See, a lot of people talk about the end of the world. Some say, well, it's just the end of an eon. It's both the end of an eon, coupled with the end of a seclorum, a man-made system, you understand, and we're all into this man-made system now, and when you look at it, it has to be a higher authority, you understand, than men and people that will bring this system to an end, because we all can admit that there's it's evil and a lot of the evil in it, but then people at the end of the day shrug their shoulders and say, what can they do about it, and they go along with it while they are still suffering you understand they are suffering people, not just even outside of America, but even in America, talking about the hunger of, of the poorest of the poor right outside the capital, the black folks right outside the capital. You understand the children, they don't have food in America. I mean, think about that for a moment. We, we, we maybe can understand over in the Horn of Africa, but the, the folks are suffering over here in a so-called first-class so-called country and society because they have never addressed and they turned their back on what they said they was going to do. They broke the covenant, you understand, um, so-called white America and the reconstruction. You understand? And those, see, they don't put that into the economic formula, but they should put it into economic formula. So like the abortion thing, 50 million so-called American abortions. I mean, put that into the whole economic. If you look at that from an economic point of view, knowing how much – an individual can contribute to a society positively if they are only given a so-called equal playing field, as it said. But that has not been done, and therefore we, we see what we see. But there must be an end of the seclorum, and yes, there's an end of the seclorum, this world system. This is designed to bring Israel, you understand? And I'm speaking about the lost sheep. This is a message to the to the children of Abraham, Yishak, and Yaakov, both the racial, the zar, or the seed, as well as those who are, quote, spiritual Israel, you understand, who might not be of the seed, but they are spiritual Israel, and our father and his father, our God and his God, the God and Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he says, spiritually, they have a right to Israel, spiritually. You understand? I'm talking about not these or those, but those Christians, those Jews, those other peoples who, who might be of other um, ethnicities. But what has been avoided is the identity of the racial and biblical Beta Israel, or House of Israel. We know about the Falashes of the, of the East, right? But no one is talking about my people, the Falashes right here of the West. In fact, they're not even talking about it. That's, that's how lost they are. So they need a trumpet, a wake-up call. And we might see whether on that day or within the four to five months after that time, as we're going into 2012, some major signs that might help to dislodge the prison bars so that some of the captives will be able to see above the brass ceiling, they'll be able to see God's heavens and recognize what day it is, what time it is, and the real signs of the time. But the end of the seclorum and even the fall of America, what America is going through, this is all designed spiritually to bring the Beit Israel, the lost black sheep, 
you understand, to finally see, open their eyes, and to turn to our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ, you understand, as their Messiah and as a true Messiah, and yes, if God was one of us, and yes, he is one of us, whom we and our ancestors rejected 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, this is a very, very important message, especially to we, the black people, you understand, especially here in the Americas and the Caribbean. We don't understand how much globally rides and resides on us and what we do, you understand. But there's a covenant that has been made with molt, with skull and bones. It's a covenant that has made, been made with death. And it's, and it's some dramatic revelations and happenings that must happen and be revealed that will finally allow that to be broken, that so-called covenant with death to be broken. Now, September 28th, 29th, the Yom HaTeruah, the Yom or the Yom Teruah, the, the, the day of trumpets, which is the civil Judaic civil New Year called Rosh Hashanah. The real spiritual New Year is 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 Passover. Just just to make I and I brothers and sisters know our true spiritual New Year. Yes, September eleventh and leap year, September twelfth, like this year, is our quote Ethiopian New Year. But remember, we are we are Hebrews, you understand, who have become likened to the Ethiopians, Amos 9 and 7. Aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O Beta Israel, O Bani, Is, Bani Yishroel, O children of Israel? So this message is important for us, and unfortunately you won't be able to get it from your preachers and pastors because most of them have made a covenant with death, unfortunately, either, either willingly, knowingly, or unknowingly. You understand? They are in league, unfortunately, with the devil. Even the image of, the, of Caesar's Christ, Caesar Borgias, and the white Jesus, and the white Christ. You understand? This is just truth. Truth is truth. Now, September 28th, 29th, the work with the wake-up call, shall we say, is the date of the Feast of Trumpets. And some say that possibly... This is a rapture. Now, like we keep repeating, and we have to repeat, because so many people, when you hear it say rapture, they're thinking of, if not Blondie's album, no, nope, you should better think of Blondie's album than think of the lie that some pseudo-nominal Christians have told about the rapture. And we've touched on that before in the other video concerning Matthew chapter 24, where it says one shall be taken and one shall be left. One shall, most, most folks want to be the one taken. And if you read the context of it, it speaks about the days of Noah when the flood, the flood of ungodliness, as the time that we're in right now with abortion, with, with homosexuality, you understand, and, and other forms of war, bloodshed, and, 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 and craft, and dishonesty. I mean, it is, the Bible stacks it up, and, and we can look at that, the template, and then we can see all the manifestations now in reality. But let's understand how important September 28th, 29th is to this picture, because here we have the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, possibly a rapture. You understand? And the rapture, basically, according to the Bible, is that they will meet him. You understand? They will meet him. They will be taken up to meet him in the air, in the ether. Most Christians, because they're carnal Christians, they interpret it carnally. That it's a physical, like, I'm going to be meeting him in the air. My clothing is going to remain behind. But they have failed to interpret it spiritually or even at a, at a basic level, metaphysically. See, their spirituality is off because their metaphysics is off because their physical has whitewashed the whole picture. So they're looking at it like themselves and then feeling a self-righteous cockiness and confidence to just believe the lies that their people have told them. The worst thing is that they've told us this lie and many of our people uh, be lie Eve this lie. But this could also, this time also very importantly, is Daniel 9.27 taking place around this same day or the same time. Remember, they're still up there in New York. 
They still have speeches and more speeches and are going to discuss possible ways of whether to go to the General Assembly or whether to get a, a vote, up or down vote, so forth and so on. We could see that happen or a combination. First of all, we know it's trumpets. This is what we know is trumpets. And even trumpets is a sort of a rapture. You know what I'm saying? Trumpets is a going up where we leave our temporal things, the other things that we're doing, and we're preparing now over the next 10 days, you understand, know for the Day of Atonement. You understand? And then, and then about five or so days afterward for ingathering. And ingathering is very, very important to Yahweh and Loheinu. Now, with the state of Israel, you understand the state, the the political state of Israel, not the state of us as Beta Israel, but it's interesting the reflexivity that we have in it. The, uh, there's a synchronicity here that a lot of folks they miss. But with Israel, the so-called Antichrist is making a seven-year peace deal or covenant. Some say at the United Nations, at the UN, with the Palestinians. Now, the Feast of Trumpets is also known, very interestingly enough, from the, prophetical, um, from, the prophetic, from the prophets and through the prophets, it's known as the time of Yaakov's trouble, the time of Jacob's trouble. And, and this is a time of trouble for Jacob's, Yaakov's seed. You understand? And especially the worst affected by this whole global economic downturn is black people especially black people in America. Forget about the couple of, of, of people who they threw money at and they got money, whether Oprah's or, or Tavis, not Tavis, not, what's the other guy, the guy that does the Dress Up Medea and, and Tyler Perry and some other ones, so on and so on. Forget about that for a moment. Those are just individuals. Yeah, they may be making jobs for 50, 100, or 150 people, or even 1,000 and 500 people, but there's more people than that which should not have to rely on that means in a so-called first world and so-called civilized country. But it's, it's, that's what it is, civil lies. It is civil lies, lies that are taught civilly. Yes, we believe in equality for everybody. It's not a black America or white America. It's just the United States of America. That's a great line. You understand? But that covers up the real deal the real picture of what's really going on. It's just how long people will put up with the make-believe. Now, the Feast of Trumpets is the time of Yaakov's Mekra, the time of Jacob's trouble. And uh, Yom Hadin, and Yom Hadin is the day of the Lord. Now, when we look at the scriptures, we notice in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3, something very interesting. It says, for when they say, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, get this, as travail upon a woman with child. In other words, as the labor pains of a woman with child, it says that sudden, sudden destruction. And if you've ever seen a woman, um, like, begin labor pains all of a sudden it's almost like all bang it, it, it hits them and so the sudden destruction is going to hit humanity in the very same way and here's the key that Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3 says it says and they shall not escape they shall not escape so there's no possibility of contingency plans and so forth and so on the almighty is making sure of that there's no there's only, the only one contingency plan and that's in spirit and truth of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, some people don't like to hear it because they want to have other options like it's, you know, like it's a video game or something. But this is reality. This is, this, is, this is the reality. Just like a lot of what's going on presently, a lot of people never anticipate it. Now white boys and girls are going back home to stay with their parents and nobody's calling them lazy bums. When it was happening to black folks, especially black males and, and black females and others, people saying that people was lazy. They could get a job at McDonald's. Well, let these other folks get a job at McDonald's and still trying to get this highfalutin job, otherwise make an excuse. Now nah, your only job is staying home walking your dog. You understand? Nobody calls that one lazy. But then people are in such a blindness, they can't even see the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy right before their eyes. And, and it's like their ability to speak has been removed from them. 
because the ability to speak is at the fifth chakra level. And that fifth chakra level, they're not even up to the heart chakra yet. They're still living at that first animal chakra. They're still living in the, as they say, the red zone, in the danger zone. So Daniel 9 and 27 may really be the peace and safety that the verse in Thessalonians is talking about. The rapture or what's known as the harpazo, harpezo. The harpezo, sound like the harp, right? Sound like that harp project, harpezo. Harpezo, that's the Greek, right? It means to seize by force. It means like a sudden jolt, to seize by force, like to snatch up, just as the man child was snatched up to Yahweh and to his throne, to God and to God's throne in the person of Lich Teferi, Ketamawi, Hala Selassie. There'll be that snatching up as well, that rapture. But most interpreters interpret this to be some out-of-this-world physical thing and forget that the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instruction before leaving earth, is a spiritual matter because we're all caught up in the earthbound existence especially with the technology. So we don't even notice what's going on up there. They could, you know, if we see, we don't understand anything. All we look is at the false celebrity and the false stars. And that is part of the hoodwinking and the bamboozling, not just of the black law sheep, but of all humanity. The two go together. You understand? So the rapture of Harpezo in Greek means to seize by force from harm or from danger's way. It's like, Physically speaking, it's like yanking someone, you know, by the hair. <laughs> Watch who you yank by the hair. From out of the way of an oncoming car or type of thing. But I'm sure if you yank somebody by the hair, because that's all you could reach, they'd be upset and ready to fight you at first, but once they recognize the danger that they was in, I would hope that they would be grateful. You understand? But that's, that's just to explain what this word harpezo is, that they would be, be raptured or be seized up to a spiritual level of understanding and reality. But we're not dismissing the transfiguration or transformation from the physical level to the spiritual level. But that could only happen with one who was born again spiritually. You see, you can't be born again physically in the sense like go back into your mother's womb and come back as a goo ga ga, -ga <laughs> baby. It's not going to happen like that. Now, this now brings us to the next point, Nibiru. The next point that we want to address in this is going to be about Nibiru, the, the, the big, bad, so-called boogeyman of Nibiru, and the New Ages love this point, the Nibiru point. But there is something out there, you understand? There is something out there. There's a lot of stuff out there, actually, more stuff than they want to tell us. But they spend all the dollars, they take it from education and health care so they can build bigger and more powerful satellites so they can just study the origins, quote, end quote, the origins of the universe. No, there's, there's much more to that game right there than meets the eye. They figure people won't believe it anyway, so they don't even bother to tell them. Um, but the next point is Nibiru, is the big bad planet X, or what we believe most likely can be and lines up to be Elenin, Elenin, or Elenin, Elenin, the comet, the planet, Nibiru, or that particular star. Some have called this the 12th planet, you understand, which, which is very interesting if you look at it. The 12th planet, would that be the Judas planet or the Jesus planet? Depends on how you count the 12. There were 12 disciples, right? So that means most likely it's the Judas planet. Could this be a, a, a Judas? But Judas, in its good sense, check this out, in its good sense as a name, means the praise of Yah. But Judas, in its negative sense, is like saying the Jews who call themselves Jews and who are not but the synagogue of HaShetan. And this is, brings us back to the Rosh Hashanah and the Yom Teruah. I mean, if the Jews been diligent with everything else, why do they cover up Yom Teruah because of a 15th or so century, some say it was maybe 6th century tr tradition, when it's clear that that is not what the word was and that's not the practice that's not the practice. The word 
Rosh Hashanah doesn't even appear in the Bible. But then, like we said, that is a that is another point coming up. So stay tuned. Shalom Ras Tefarit.